Well, let's have a closer look at these travel measures with three members of parliament. Chris Biddle is a Liberal MP and Parliamentary Secretary to the Transport Minister. Stephanie Cousy is the Conservative Transport Critic and Don Davies is the NDP Health Critic. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you. Good to be Thank here. Thank you. Mr. Biddle, I want to start with you. Uh, why is it that the government took until the end of January to introduce these measures when there have been calls for further action to discourage travel for weeks and even months? Well, our primary concern is to listen to public health experts and the arising of new variants, the South African variant, the uh, British variant, um, caused us to increase those, those measures. And we've said from the start, even though we've had some of the most stringent uh, travel requirements in the world, we said we would take steps uh, as were necessary and as were directed by public health authorities, and we're taking those measures now. Ms. Cousy, I want to turn to you now. What is your reaction to these new measures that were unveiled by the Prime Minister today? Well, it's a good question, Andrew. And the reality is, is that it is the incompetence and the inaction of this government that has brought us to where we are today. We've seen the government fail consistently in the fall with rapid testing, with on-arrival testing, despite many positive pilot projects across airports across the country. And of course, most recently with vaccines where they are failing terribly, both in procurement and distribution. And all of these things, Andrew, have brought us to these points of action here today where Canadians suffer. Canadians have done what Canadians do. They've been patient. They've gone along with government instruction as they should, but it's the result of incompetence and an action of this government that really brought about the necessity for these travel and, uh, restrictions here today. Okay, well, we'll give Mr. Bill a chance to respond in a moment, but Don Davies, I want to get your reaction to this, the view from the NDP on what these new travel measures mean. Well, you know, it's been said that the classic Liberal approach to governing is to do as little as possible and only when absolutely essential, and the problem is that that's, that's fatal when you're dealing with a public health emergency, but it's been typical of the Liberal government's response. They've been weak, they've been slow, and they've been confusing. And, you know, frankly, it's preposterous for the Liberals to say that we have among the most stringent travel requirements in the world. That's just demonstrably false. You know, Greece has, uh, in December, they brought in a three-day quarantine requirement and mandatory testing for anybody coming into Greece. Australia and New Zealand have had 14-day mandatory quarantines in hotels for months now. And uh, we've had the Prime Minister urging Canadians not to uh, perform non-essential travel, uh, you know, when, when in fact what we need is we need strict, strong measures to ban that. And of course, we're, we've got the perfect storm right now. We've got uh, slow vaccine doses, we've got surging cases, and we have the emergence of variants. So I think the proof is in the proof uh, in their lack of strong measures is in the, the fact that Canada right now is in the position we're in. So, Mr. Bill, how about that? And perhaps you can talk a bit more about what the timeline is going to be for actually getting this new system up and running where we have people getting tested at airports, where, where we have people quarantining in hotels. Uh, when should Canadian travel, travelers expect to actually see this rolling out? Absolutely. And I want to be clear that from March, under the Quarantine Act, Canadians have been required by law to quarantine for 14 days. And there have been no foreign nationals except for essential uh, individuals allowed to travel into Canada. Um, the details with respect to hotel quarantining will come out in the next few days, but Canadians need to come home. Um, but also, I, I do want to credit uh, our airlines as well. And working with them, and they've taken the decision to uh, suspend flights to sun destinations. Um, and we're working with health authorities, we're working with the sector, and we will take the steps that are necessary to protect the health of Canadians. Well, in fact, airlines have been warning that the situation is dire, that uh, flight bans would be devastating. And just today, as this announcement was being made, you know, we saw a drop in the stock price for both Air Canada and Air Transat, uh, again, as these measures were being announced. So, uh, Ms. Cousy, I want to turn to you. Is more financial assistance the answer? Well, this, the airline sector is absolutely the punching bag and the scapegoat for this government, their incompetency and their inaction. Mr. Biddle is giving them credit today. What they really need is some type of cohesive plan to get them uh, through the pandemic, which the government has not provided to this point. And the result is 
the destruction of a sector, losses of tens of thousands of jobs across the country, and now Canadians having their civil liberties restricted as a result of the incompetence and inaction of this government. We have been calling for action for months and months regarding rapid testing, testing on arrival, and it's been met with silence and failure to land exactly where we are today with the necessity for these travel restrictions. So Mr. Biddle and his government can give no credit or must give credit to the airline sector, but it's really at their hands that the destruction of not only this sector, but really the state that we've gotten to uh, as a nation with, with the lack of action. And now we're seeing this with the vaccines where we are here today. Okay, and we'll get to vaccines in a moment. But Mr. Davies, I do want to let you get in on this question about airlines. And again, another round of flights being cancelled, this time to sunnier destinations down south. Uh, how do you see the effect on this uh, and for the airlines? Well, you know, first I'll start with Mr. Biddle commented that there's been 14-day quarantining since March. Well, everybody knows that that's been on an honour system and, frankly, enforcement has been a joke. Uh, I have people telling me all the time they used to get maybe one phone call. In the 14 days now, I hear people aren't even getting a single checkup call. Uh, you know, the fact that the government is now moving to mandatory three-day quarantining in hotels upon entry to Canada is a sign that their previous 14-day voluntary quarantining process wasn't strong enough. It wasn't working. That's why it's changed. And, you know, I've always thought it's incongruous that the Prime Minister tells people to, uh, they're urging Canadians not to do any non-essential travel. At the same time, in a federally regulated industry like airlines, sitting back while they were advertising sun vacations to sunspots throughout de November, December, and into January. And here we are, it's almost February. So th this is typical of the government's confused and confusing and weak response to this. You know, the countries that have done the best, Andrew, are the ones that have short, sharp, strong measures taken. It's painful, but it's painful for a short period of time and it allows the economy uh, to recover faster and, and transmission rates to be reduced. That's not the approach Liberals have been taking. And I would say as well, the airline sector does need, I think, significant federal assistance because if we're going to ask them to, uh, to um, um, suppress their business opportunities, I think it's incumbent on us to support them because the airline industry is part of our essential infrastructure in this country. Hey, Mr. Biddle, I'll turn back to you then. Uh, can we expect more information on assistance uh, to the airlines coming up uh, in the next little while? Absolutely. And we committed in November, Minister Garneau committed to assistance to the airlines. We know they have uh, faced uh, significant effects, more probably more so than any other sector in our economy. But we also have to make sure we get a good deal for Canadians. And that's why any deal will be contingent on refunds back to Canadians, um, and uh, ensuring that um, aerospace, uh, Canadian aerospace contracts are fulfilled. Um, and other criteria, Canadians want a good deal and we are negotiating and um, I expect uh, hopefully something in the near future. Okay, well, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, Chris Biddle, Stephanie Cousy and Don Davies, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Andrew. You.